Content warning. The following video contains material that may be harmful or traumatizing to some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Yes, Godzilla. Epilogue. I am Zachary, and at the time I write this, it has been three weeks since that fateful night I played the NAS Godzilla game. Going back to that night to immediately after I turned off the NES, once I was able to start walking around again, the first thing I did was unplug the NES, take out the cartridge and then put them in separate sock drawers. I looked over at the computer. All the screenshots you've seen in the story were saved. I backed up all the images on a flash drive before I turned the computer off, just in case. After that, I hit the bed and instantly passed out. It was not a restful sleep, but one of complete exhaustion. It felt like no time had passed before I'd woke again. And what a day that was. I first thought, but the first thought I recall coming to mind was, what the hell happened last night? I thought about it for a short while until it occurred to me to contact the person I got the game from to begin with, Billy. So I called him up and told him just to just come over to my apartment, which he did. And I showed him the screenshots and gave him a very basic summary of what happened. At first, he thought it was pulling a joke on him, but he soon realized that, that was not the case. Once it hit him, this was real. He was speechless. He, he made it clear that he had absolutely not tampered with the game and had no idea about any of this. So then the obvious question to Billy was, where did you get it from? I got the simple answer of uh, another friend of mine that I trade games with. He assured me that this was a trustworthy person and he had never had any issues with games he had got from them before. So then Billy called him. But when we told this guy the story, he was as shocked and surprised as anyone, except he abruptly hung up on us. This was clearly glowing nowhere. Before Billy left that day, he asked me if I wanted to, him to take the cartridge and dispose of it. I sharply declined. He asked how I could possibly still want to keep the thing. I told him that I needed time to think it over, and that was that. Billy and I haven't talked much since. Even though I've told him that this isn't the case, I get the impression that Billy thinks what happened to the, with the game is my, his fault. After he left that day, I did a lot of thinking. It was very hard for me to do anything else, really. I couldn't stop thinking about that game. There were so many questions left unanswered. What was Red? Was Melissa really in the game? How did she even get there? Why did all this happen with this game? But the question that kept me up for so many nights was... Red said he had known me for a long time. How? Ever since then, I can't shake the feeling of being watched. The game made me ask myself questions about death and reality in ways that I never wanted to think about. I'm not too sure of anything anymore. Constantly thinking about it soon began to have a negative impact on my life. I just didn't care about anything else at that point. By comparison, all the other day-to-day -day activities just seemed utterly pointless. I eventually decided that I had to choose between one or two things. Try to play the thing game again, or destroy it. I tried several times to convince myself to try to do the former, but I never got farther than plugging the NES back up. Just touching the cartridge made me remember the faint pain I felt during the fight with Red. 
I wondered if perhaps playing the game again myself might cause something terrible to happen. I didn't know anything about how this game worked, and it was too risky. I, I wasn't sure I could stand another round of the game anyway. So then it was time to take the other option. Wanting to get some fresh air, I took the game with me and drove to the lake, planning to throw it in. I got up to the lake with the cartridge in my hands, and I looked down on it, and I, I thought of Melissa. If what had experienced if what I had experienced in the game was indeed genuine, doing what I did may have been the only way to save her from endless torture. In a way, this warped game might have saved her soul. Once that thought came into my head, I knew that I would, wouldn't be able to destroy it. So I sat down in a bench, gazing at the lake for about an hour. Ultimately, I decided on a third option. Selling the game on eBay. It may be selfish, but I promise you that it had nothing to do with money. I don't care how much or little I get paid for this game, believe me. It's selfish because I don't want the responsibility of owning this cartridge anymore. I cannot dwell on it this forever. And the only way I can deal with this is by putting the game out of my life. So this brings me to the main reason I created the summary of these events. First is to record the details while I can remember them, and second is that whoever bids on this game knows what they're getting into. I can't guarantee the safety of anyone else who plays this game or that anything will happen, but to the new owner of this game, remember this. Be careful. And if you feel as if the game is literally messing with your head, shut the damn thing off. <laughs>